Let's have a quick discussion about our gain sharing algorithm. Lecrosonics has a new gain sharing algorithm. It's not, not that new. We've actually been patented now for a number of years. And the patent is called continuous gain modulation with auto skewing. And there's two parts to that. The first part is continuous gain modulation. Now, continuous gain modulation is where we're controlling the level of the microphones, not by switching them on and off, but instead by adjusting their levels proportional to how much gain they have compared to the rest of the system. For example, in the other types of auto mixers, then, and you can tell whether an auto mixer is a gating type or not, they use a noise gate. And what a noise gate does is it adjusts the level based on hitting a certain threshold. So you can tell whether or not it's a threshold-based unit by whether or not it has a threshold adjustment. Many of them do. There's a few out there, like the Shure, for example, that has it's using an automatic threshold adjustment where it starts with a very low threshold for nobody talking, and when someone begins talking, it adds threshold to the other microphones. But in most threshold-based systems, gated systems, what happens is that the first character of the first word, you end up with losing that first character. For example, they start out, good morning. Uday, we're going to talk about wireless microphones. Umaro, we're going to talk about something else. You lose that first character. Or if you back away from the microphone and get close to the threshold, the human voice modulates the level up and down quite a bit. So as you back away from the microphone on a gated system, you get to a point where you hit the threshold and your voice starts to break up and really understand what trying to say. So a gated system has a lot of drawbacks. So we went with what is called continuous gain modulation, which is a, uh, a superset or a evolutionary step beyond the Dan Dugan uh, shared gain algorithm. It is shared gain, but we have no thresholds for the microphones. Example, if you have, let's say you had four microphones. If we build a little chart here and we show the room noise level here, what happens is the microphones will basically all hover at some point below the total gain if nobody is talking. The microphones are always on. This is an important factor to remember with our auto mixer algorithm. The microphones are always on. They may be very low or not, depending on how many microphones. It's all determined by how many active mics you have in the systems, how many active microphones the unit detects. And by active, I mean microphones plugged in and receiving audio. So it's 10 times the log of the number of open mics on how we control the gain. So it's 10 times the number of open mics, 10 times the log. Basically, every time you double the number of open mics, it lowers the gain of all the microphones by three decibels. So if you have two microphones, you're going to be 3 dB down from the gain you would have with just one. If you have four microphones, it would be 6 dB down. If you had eight, it would be 9 dB down and so on. But let's take a look at this. Let's say we have four microphones in the system. And basically, the summed total, when no one is talking in the room, the summed total of all the microphones in our system are equal to one open mic. If you listen to the, out, the mixed output of the system, what you would hear would be the equivalent of one microphone up at full gain. No one is talking, though, in our scenario right now. So what you end up with is a four microphones all turned down to the point where all of them add up to the equivalent of one open microphone. So when you're listening to the mixed output, what you end up with is the, what you would hear if you had only one microphone at full gain. The summed total of the four microphones equals one open mic. With our continuous gain modulation, then what happens if somebody starts speaking at microphone one here? So they start speaking at level up here. Well, what will happen is that microphone will jump up to full gain, and the other microphones will drop proportionally. That's why it's called a shared gain algorithm. Their level drops down. What we added here was taken out of here. The summed total of all the microphones still equals one open mic, but the majority of the gain is assigned to the guy talking. And we don't do it by switching on the microphone. That's where we are different. Everybody else uses this kind of switching capability, even in a shared gain. We use continuous gain modulation, which means basically if the microphone, if we have the, the uh, person talking, let's say they're not talking, so room level is here, 
and then someone starts talking, their voice comes on and you get this modulation in the audio. What happens with the microphone is you end up with a proportional reaction. Basically the microphone is picking up a little bit of this room noise until someone starts talking and then the gain of the microphone rises and to capture that signal. So basically, it comes on just the same as the person's voice. If you look at gain as a linear function, it comes up very quickly. It's not switching on. It rises proportional to the amount of signal it's detecting from the source. So shared gain and continuous gain modulation is just like somebody operating a fader, a skilled operator operating faders. Audio up, audio down. Someone starts talking, a really good operator is right on it, and he gets the microphone on when he sees the guy getting ready to react. Well, we're acting in milliseconds here, so it's, it's so quick that you don't lose the first character, the first word, and because the microphone was never completely off, you cannot lose any characters in the signal. So you end up with a very smooth, clean reaction. That's part one of the patent. That's called the continuous gain modulation. So it's very smooth. It doesn't, uh, it's just like I said, nobody's throwing switches and turning things on and off. The signals are being faded up and very, faded down very rapidly. There are no switching transients. Uh, if you had a gated system, what would happen is it would react, but because it, there would be a gap in time where it would react, it wouldn't hit until this point, and you would get this sudden spike in your audio, and that would cause a click or a pop. We don't do that. It's nice and smooth. In fact, the biggest accusation we've ever had about our automix algorithm is people not believing it's really automixing because they can't hear the automixing. That's kind of the whole idea. That's part one.